Sunday of the month, but I'm still thinking we're still fresh. We're gonna, Andy and I have been talking about our values and our vision. We're gonna talk about lift, going further with God, amen, in 2017. I just, I can't wait to see what God has for us to do. We believe by ourselves we can do almost anything, right? But together, we can do the impossible with God. Together, we, as a church, can do the impossible for God. Over the next four weeks, and Pastor Andrew and myself, we're going to go over the four values statements that are going to take Capital City further in 2017. So I just can't wait. This week, we're going to talk about believing. We are believers. Amen? That's right. Believing for God to do the impossible for us and for his kingdom. Amen? It, the impossible. What does that mean? It's crazy. God can do anything. Amen? We are praying that this message will steer your hearts to believe God. Yes. That's what we're praying. That you can believe God that the impossible can be possible for your life and the life of this church. Amen? I believe God can do that. We want you to believe for the impossible to happen in your life. What are you praying for? What do you want God to do? We're going to, I believe that we're going to trace back to this very moment, this service, when God steered your hearts and your minds to believe the impossible happened in your life and the life of this church. I believe this moment, this day, this very service, God's going to change your heart and mind to believe Him to do more than you can ever imagine and believe in your own heart. This day, when God inspired you to do more for Him than you ever did in your whole life. I'm going to start off with this, our first value statement. Can we put that on the screen? It's in your bulletin. If you take out your bulletin, the back of it, I know. Our first value statement is this. We value believing. We value believing the impossible is possible. You can write that in your bulletin. That God is able to do super abundantly, far over, and infinitely beyond our highest prayers, desires, thoughts, hopes, and dreams. Let's look at it together. We value believing. As a church, we value believing. I mean, I have to believe God. He's real, right? We value believing that he can do what? The impossible. That the impossible is possible. That God is able to do super abundantly, far over, and infinitely beyond our highest prayers, desires, thoughts, hopes, and dreams. He can do everything, amen? amen. He can do it through you, and he can do it through me. And I, we believe that he's going to do it through our church. Let's say this together. We value we believing God, God together for the impossible to be possible. Amen? Do you believe it? I want to start off with two stories. There was, a, there was two times in the Bible that Jesus said he was amazed. Two times Jesus said that he was amazed. One time he believed, he, he said he was amazed when the centurion believed God for healing for a servant. He was amazed by his great faith. He said, in all of Israel, I haven't found such great a faith than in this man right here. The second time was when he, he was amazed by the people's lack of faith. In his hometown, when he went through his town, and he wanted to pray, do miracles, it says, it's kind of funny because it says this in the Bible, it says, that he just did some healings. He couldn't do much work there. All he could do was some healings. I thought I thought I was reading that over again this morning. I thought, God, can we just do some healings? But he said he was amazed by their lack of faith. So God, Jesus was amazed two times. He was amazed by great faith that he saw in the centurion, and he was amazed by the lack of faith of some of the people that didn't believe he, who he was who he was. Because the centurion, even though he's in charge of over a hundred people, soldiers. <laughs> He knew the work that Jesus did in the area, so he believed God that if he would just say the words, don't have to come 
in my house. But if you just say the words, Jesus, I know my servant will be healed. And then in his hometown, he just, they just had such a lack of faith, they couldn't believe it. You're just a carpenter's son. You're Joseph's boy. You're, you're like nobody. Jesus said he was amazed at their lack of faith. We want you to leave. We want you to have great faith. To believe God for the impossible to be, po to be possible in your life and the life of this church. I have a couple questions for you. We go back to 2017. And if Jesus would look at your faith level, if you look at you and say, okay, what is your faith level? Did you believe God during this, this last year? Did you believe him for amazing things that happened? Did you trust that he could do miracles? Did you trust him to do those things? Or would he be, I guess, would Jesus be amazed at your great faith? Or would Jesus be amazed at your lack of faith? Think about this. Those are two pretty good questions, right? Try to wrap your mind around it for a second. Would Jesus be amazed at your great faith? Or would Jesus be amazed at your lack of faith in him? So I want to do a rating system. All right, I want you to rate yourself. All right, one through ten. Let's say we have a scale. Put on your put in your notes. One through ten. Ten being Jesus. Yeah, we're gonna put up the signs, right? <laughs> Kyle. Ten being Jesus, and let's say one or negative one is the devil. Okay, so scale one to ten. I want you to rate yourself. Maybe you prayed and you have this great faith. You, you believe that. You prayed and God did stuff. I mean, God did stuff for you. Every time you pray, man, God answered your prayer. Maybe you have like, that'd be like a six through nine kind of thing, right? That'd be a scale. You, I, every time I pray, this happened. Wouldn't that be cool? Every time you pray, God said yes. I pray for this, yes. God said this, yes, yes, yes. God's going to answer your prayers, right? Wouldn't it be awesome? He said he would do that. So let's take a minute, let's examine yourself just for a minute here. Just look at last week. Let's, let's, let, it's hard to say all of last year, but let's just take last week for a change, for a minute. Did you pray and God answered? I mean, what if he did that? Every prayer that you prayed, he answered. What would happen in your life and what would happen in, your, in the world? Maybe you would pray like for cancer to be healed. And cancer was healed. Because I believe God can do the impossible, right? What if you pray for a blind person? How many people prayed for a blind people last week? Pray for a blind person. God healed them. Can God do that? It's in the Word, and I kind of believe the Word of God, amen? That God can do what He's done in the Word of God because He said we can do greater works. So impossible in our eyes could be possible with God. So you pray and God healed them. Or you pray for a lost loved one or a neighbor. And God, they came to Jesus. How many of those out there? Rate yourself. Six through nine. That'd be you, right? Uh, how, about, how about if some of us just like prayed over our meal? So you prayed, God bless our food, and your food was blessed. I, I mean, you blessed food. That's awesome. Right? Or I prayed for a safe journey to Grandma's house. That was me. I prayed, God give us traveling mercies <coughs> that we make it to wherever, right? And God gave you traveling mercies, and you made it safely. And I think God answers like all that, those prayers about 99.9% of the time, right? You travel and you just pray. How about if you were, you didn't pray at all? You didn't believe God for anything. Some of you go look back last week and go, yeah, I didn't, nothing happened because I didn't pray. Nothing. You didn't pray a single prayer for yourself or for the kingdom of God. What would happen? We are believing 
that 2017 is going to be a year that you and me believe God for the impossible to be possible for his kingdom. We are believing that you go from unbelieving to believing. I want our church to be a church that won't, God wouldn't be amazed at our unbelief, but he'd be amazed at our great belief in what he can do. Pastor Andy's going to come, Andrew, sorry, is going to come, and he's going to share with you three points that are going to help us increase our faith in 2017. All right, so we can say it together, right? So we value, right, we can say this together. We value believing the impossible is possible, right? We value believing the impossible is possible. So we, we want, in 2017, if we're thinking about how we as a church, how are we going to go further? How are we going to go further as a family? How am I going to go further in my faith? Well, i got to value believing the impossible is possible. Because we are going to begin to understand that with God, all things are possible. That with God, nothing is too difficult. That with God, when I believe in God, I can go further. I believe in God, I will see the impossible. If you believe that, I hope that as we make these next three points, that we will begin to believe that we as a church, that we as individuals, that we as families can see the impossible because we believe that God is able. Amen. I love this, uh, the, 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 the thing that we worked on this week that we were talking with mom and over the last couple of months we've been preparing for this um, message and specifically thinking about what, what is it? Is it just that we value believing? No, we value believing because we know that God can do super abundantly, far over, and infinitely beyond our highest hopes, dreams, prayers, thoughts. God is able to do that. So let's see. Let's make three points here. Let's see three insights. How is this going to be? How can I make this something inside of me, something that I believe, something that I value, that is not just a nice, fancy thing the church says, but no, I can value this myself. So the first thing is, the impossible becomes possible when we believe God. So let's look at Hebrews chapter 11, verse 6. The impossible becomes possible when we believe God. Hebrews chapter 11, and we're looking at verse 6. It says this, And without faith, it is impossible to please God, because anyone who comes to him must first believe that he exists and that he awards those who earnestly seek him. That's an encouraging uh, message. And one, it's uh, this valuation. We, we started with this valuation of 1 through 10. Okay, where, where are we at on this scale? Do I have great faith? Over this last week, what happened? Did the, the blind see? Did the lame walk? Did uh, the cancer get healed? Or maybe the greatest thing that happened the last week through my prayers was that my food was blessed. Maybe I, I have a little bit of uh, a room to grow in my faith, right? But it says here that it's impossible to please God without faith. And I said, and I read that verse and in my heart, I said, man, I want to please God. Man, I want to make God happy. It, it, it delights me when God smiles. It delights me when God has joy. And so I, if I want to bring pleasure to God, I want to have to increase. I'm going to have to grow in my faith. And in 2017, I, if I want to go further, if I want to go further in pleasing God, then I want to, I desire to grow in my faith. But it says this, anyone who comes to him, anyone who puts faith, anybody that wants this faith must believe that he exists. So we see here, I know that uh, sometimes when we take these faith steps, when we talk about believing for the impossible, going after something that God's telling us to do, sometimes immediately there are some emotions that come up. Maybe it's a little uncomfortable uh, immediately when we think about doing the impossible, when we do what God wants us to do, we think, oh, it might be difficult, it might be challenging, it might be some emotions that come up. But let's look a little bit here at the story of Peter. Look at Matthew chapter 14, verse 22 
through 33, the story of Peter. And, and this story is Jesus has just done this amazing miracle. He fed thousands of people with just a little bit of food. And he sends his disciples out to the other side and says, you know what, I'm going to go. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to cross. I'm going to go with you to the other side of, of the lake. But he sends his disciples ahead of him. And, he, and they're out on this, on this uh, sea. And all of a sudden, they see somebody. They didn't know who it was. They thought it maybe was even a ghost. See somebody walking across the water. And Jesus reveals to them that it's him. Is it, it, it's me. Is it, uh, and, and Peter says this. He says, if it's, he says uh, this in verse 28. He says, Lord, if it's you, tell me to come to you on the water. And Jesus said, come. And if you read this story in entirety, we see that Peter, he actually takes a step out of the boat and he begins to walk on water. So not only is Jesus out on the water, but Peter actually takes some steps on water. And if you have studied physics at all, if you've taken a few science classes, we know this isn't possible, right? It, Peter just does the impossible. First Jesus does it, right? And then Peter begins to do the impossible. Why? I, I begin to question this, that we thought about this, you know, I want to do the impossible. We, we believe that the impossible is possible, that we can have walk on water moments, right? Why did, why did Peter take these steps? Because he knew who was out there. If it was somebody different out there, it was some, some other person, he, he, he wouldn't have taken those steps. And if, he, if they would have replied, no, I'm not, I'm not the Lord, I'm a ghost, uh, they, they, would, they, they wouldn't have done it. But when, when Peter asked them, is it you? If it's really you, call me out. And then Jesus said, yeah, it, this is me, come. Peter had an assurance, had such faith, had such belief in who Jesus was, that he said, you know what? I can do the impossible. I, I can step out of the boat. So if we're thinking about uh, having this value that the impossible becomes possible, it starts with believing God, believing in who he is. Peter had such faith in who Jesus was that he knew that if Jesus were the one calling him out, take that step, all that anxiety, all those feelings, all the, the worry about the storm, and okay, I know my weight. I mean, he's a fisherman. He knew heavy things sink in water, right? I mean, it wasn't like. No surprises. It wasn't. He knew it was impossible, but he knew also who was calling him to take that step. He believed Jesus was able to do that thing that he was calling him to do. And sometimes in our lives, sometimes immediately, when we think about the impossible thing in front of us, whether it be going and, and starting school, whether it be writing a book, whether it be raising another child, whether it be what, uh, the, the workplace environment, what, whether it be sharing my faith, we, sometimes immediately we kind of get those emotions. We kind of get those the eerie feeling inside of us. But when we know who has called us to do such things, we can take that step. The impossible becomes possible when we believe God. We believe in Him, we have faith in Him, we know, man, if He's calling me to do this, I'm, I can do it. No matter what it's going to cost me, no matter what it's going to, or no matter what it's going to feel like in my heart. So first thing, if we're going to see the impossible, if we're going to go further in 2016, we must, we must believe God. And the impossible will become possible. Secondly, we know, or we find, that when we believe God, we can be assured the impossible is possible. Yeah. Not just we can know, like we can, we can know, but we can have we can have assurance, we can have guarantee it's going to happen. The possible the impossible will become possible. In Hebrews chapter, we're staying in Hebrews and looking at uh, Hebrews uh, chapter eleven, verse one. This is a great uh, verse about faith. And I would encourage you to memorize it if you can. Take it on a on a cue card, you know, an index card. Try to memorize this verse. It's a good one to get inside of us. This is this in Hebrews chapter eleven, verse one. It says, "Now faith is the confidence in what we hope for, and the assurance about what we do not see." Faith, believing. Believing the impossible is possible, that God is able to do super and far over infinitely beyond our 
highest prayers, his highest thoughts, hope or dreams, believing is the confidence in what we hope for and assurance about what we do not see. When we place our faith, when we place our belief in God, we can have the assurance because it's outside of our ability and it comes into His ability. We can be assured that He is able to do all that He says. We, we don't have to have this feeling of doubt or insecurity, but we can actually say that, no, I don't, I don't accept those things. I'm going to accept what I know God is able to do. I have assurance that He is going to make the impossible possible. Some of you guys uh, know my sister Amy, and you guys have met Esther. Little Esther uh, runs around here. She's like the most bubbly little two-year-old uh, I've ever uh, gotten to know, and she's climbing on things, always smiling, and her laugh is so adorable. But uh, some of you that have been around Capital City Church for a while know that a year ago, uh, actually a year ago, last weekend, uh, Esther, at a year and a half, uh, had a stroke, had seizure induced stroke, a year and a half. Rushed into the uh, emergency room, stayed in the emergency room. The doctors were running test after test after test. They couldn't figure out what was wrong, what was going on, uh, what caused this stroke. They couldn't, they couldn't figure it out, so they were doing more tests. And, were, and all, the, all the tests came back negative. We don't, know, we don't know what happened, they just know that, that she had a stroke. You know, in, the, in talk about stroke and the, the devastating effects that a stroke can have, especially like at a young age like that, they're talking about fears of, of not being able to have right speech and mobility issues and all sorts of things. And there came a time in, in this process where Amy said, you know what, no more tests. No, no more check. We're going to believe that, that God, has done, God has done a miracle. We, as a family, as the church members, as a, as a family, we begin to pray that, hey, God will do something in, uh, in Esther's life. And it was almost, it was, there, was, there was time there that they it just began to say, uh, Amy just began to say, no, we're going to believe that God is going to do the impossible. So they, they've been, they started uh, taking off medicine and taking off different things and and uh, doing different checkups, and then she, she still, you know, go to the doctors, and they're, they, right after they got out of the hospital, actually, they, they went and they had, a, they had a checkup for, for vision and things of that nature, or, and, then, and then the next one, they had a checkup for mobility and see how she's moving, and the, the doctor actually told Amy, she said, she said if, I, if I hadn't read the records, like what, what uh, the doctors in the ER have said, if I hadn't read the records and, and, and know what had happened to Esther, I would say, I would ask you, why is she here with me? There's almost no sign or effects of the stroke that she had had, uh, and the, you know, other than the fact that they could see it on the MRI, they could see, okay, there was something happening in her brain, but they, as far as physically, they, they said, we can't see anything wrong with Esther. And if you know her today, if she was here this morning, she'd be running around, smiling, and dancing around just like any two-year-old would. Because Amy decided, I'm going to believe the impossible is possible. That God is going to be able to do super, super above, far beyond anything we could hope or imagine. And when she put her faith in God, all of a sudden, man, things begin to show up in Esther's life. And now you would never know that a year ago, a, a little Esther had a stroke. When we believe God, we can have an assurance that the impossible is possible. Hebrews 11, 1. And the last insight this morning, if we want to see the impossible, we have to step away from the possible. If we want to see the impossible, we have to step away from the possible. So I know, it, and I've said this a few times in other messages, right, that uh, I sometimes can have, uh, and myself, I have some skills and I have some abilities, right? I know uh, where my limits are, and I feel pretty comfortable at those limits. You know, if somebody tells me, hey, Andrew, could you do this? And, you know, I could assess myself pretty well, and I say, yeah, that's, that's, that's possible. I could do that. Yeah, okay, uh, Andrew, you want to start another missional community on a Friday night? And Rachel and I said, okay, that's, that's possible. We can do that. No problem. But let's, let's do that. 
I, there's a certain part where we, can, we know what we are capable of doing. And a lot of times we rest our walk with the Lord, we rest in what we're able to do. We access it. Somebody asks us, hey, hey, Andrew, or hey, could you do uh, this? Could you help with you? And we assess and we're like, you know what? I kind of I kind of like my Monday nights because I got the basketball games. I go to them on Monday nights and I'm, I'm okay. And I kind of assess because I, I think on my own limitation, I say, no, nah, it's not really impossible. It, it's not really possible for me. I, I really can't do that. Or sometimes we say, yeah, I could, I could bring a little snack. Uh, to this situation, or I could uh, do this task, but yeah, I, I can fit in my schedule. When we talk about seeing the impossible, believing God for the impossible, we, we know what many of us are able to do. We know what the, the plate, uh, what we have on our plates. But sometimes God calls us to do something that's outside of ourselves. And so if we want to accomplish those things, if we want to see those kind of kingdom-sized things happen in our in our life or in the in the church, then sometimes we're going to say, you know what, it's not really possible, it's not really comfortable for me. But you know what, I'm going to step away from what's comfortable. I'm going to step away from what's possible, what I'm able to do, and I'm going to step into the possible. I'm going to step into God's ability and what He's able to do. I'm going to follow on Him. Hebrews chapter eleven is this. I think what I'm referring to is this great uh, passage about faith. And it says in Hebrews, in Hebrews chapter 11, verse 8, it, it tells different stories, kind of uh, talks about different stories in the Old Testament, different people that said, hey, I want to believe God, I want to do what he, he said about this. And one of those stories that it recounts is the story of Abraham. In, in Hebrews chapter 11, and starting in verse 8, it kind of summarizes just quickly Abraham's story. And it says this, By faith, by putting belief in God, Abraham, when called to go to a place he would later receive as his inheritance, obeyed and went, even though he did not know where he was going. So I know there's really good teachings from even uh, there is good teaching about Jesus uh, from Jesus himself, and sometimes we use even sometimes Jesus's words against Jesus. You ever talk about, uh, you ever think about discipleship, and there's a, there's a verse in, 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 when Jesus is talking about discipleship, and he says that you have to count the cost before you, you uh, choose to follow him, right? And he said that a builder, doesn't, a, a builder doesn't build a tower without first counting the cost, or, or somebody doesn't go into battle without first counting an army and making sure everything is, is set, right? And so sometimes in our, in our um, spiritual desires and our and our uh, and maybe our guardedness, right? We can use that verse and say, okay God, count the cost. You know what that cost is a little bit too much. I just want to sit here for a little bit. But I want to encourage you in those moments when we say, okay, sometimes the cost or sometimes the effort or sometimes the, the task of walking out on the water, sometimes that seems like a little bit too much. Abraham here, he said, uh, he he showed his proof faith. He proved his faith by saying, you know what, God? I don't even know where you're going. I don't even know where you're sending me to. I don't even know what the land looks like yet. I don't, God didn't tell him anything. God just said, go. And then I'll tell you. If we want to see the impossible made possible, we've got to step away from the possible. We've got to step away from our ability to assess the situation and say, okay, maybe this is an okay risk for me to take. God's calling us to do greater things. He's calling us to go further. He's calling us to call us take steps out. And, he, and it's going to require us to say, you know what? Okay, I'm going to step away from the possible. I'm going to step away from what's comfortable. And I'm going to go for it. I'm going to believe God's going to do the impossible. He's going to do the next step. He's going to do it. I'm going to lean into him. And he's going to do it. Just as Abraham went. And when he went, all of a sudden he received a land for his inheritance that was greater than his, his biggest imagination, right? Yeah. He, he, it says that God told him that his inheritance would number the, just like the sands on the sea, right? He, he didn't know what it was going to be, but he said, you know what? I believe. I'll start taking, I'll, I'll start. Abraham was a wealthy man. He had everything in, organized and together, you know? He had a pretty nice uh, house with a white picket fence and 3.1 kids, uh, 2.5 kids, right, and, and a two-car garage. Yeah, I mean, he had all that already. The guy said, you know what? What I'm calling you to is go 
going to be great. What I'm calling you to is going to take you further. What I'm calling you to go on better. Trust me. Do it. Leave what's possible. Leave what you already accomplished. Leave those things for the sake of the kingdom and for God's glory. If we're going to go further in 2017, we must believe the impossible is possible, that God is able to do super abundantly, far over, and infinitely beyond our highest prayers, desires, thoughts, hopes, or dreams. And anything that He calls us to, we're willing to say yes, because you know what? He's the one calling me to do it. So what, what is this going to look like in our life? What, what, could, what could this possibly look like? Uh, what could it look like if my family my, said, you know what? We believe God. Anything is possible. And tough situations come. And you know what? The first thing we're going to do, man, we're going to pray that God's infinite ability comes to press down on my tough situation. Uh, what would it look like if people know that other people in the body are sick and all of a sudden, instead of, you know, just saying, hey, would you pray for me? It's just telling you, hey, you know, I got a headache. What if the first thing we did is that, you know what? I'm going to pray that the impossible is possible, that God heals your body. Man, but we would begin to see God-sized things happen. Right? What if, what if God were to call some of us and say, you know what, I'm calling you to host an MC in my home, or I'm calling you to, to lead a missional community so that your neighbors could come to know Jesus. It seems impossible. It seems hard. It seems like there's a lot of different uh, the things that, that can come against you. It seems like it's going to be hard in my schedule. But you know what? The impossible is possible. When you believe God, you know, what would it what would it look like if God calls you to do a little side ministry? What if God calls you to, to adopt a child and to make room in your home for another child and it's difficult and maybe the finances don't match up and maybe things, but you believe the possible is the impossible is possible with God. What what is it gonna be if God says, you know what, share your faith with your coworker? Hey, take your neighbor out to dinner, invite them over. What is it gonna be? Maybe it's gonna be hard, maybe we don't know all the words, maybe we don't know all the answers, but we you know what? We know the impossible is possible because we put our faith in God. These are the type of things that are going to change. What if it takes to turn off the TV and God says, you know what? As a family, turn off your TV for an hour at night and get out the Word and pray together and read the Word. And you know what? It, it's, going to be, it's going to be hard because maybe the kids aren't going to like that. And maybe it's going to be different. But you know what? The, possible, the impossible could become possible if we believe in God. These are the type of things that we're going to see in our families and they're going to change. And as a church, and what it, would it look like if we begin to believe the impossible is possible. If every chair in the sanctuary could be filled and a kid's ministry is full of kids that love Jesus and are hungry for him, what it would it look like if we had a, somebody would say, you know what, I'm willing to lead our youth ministry. We have none. They haven't had one for, for a year. But you know what? The impossible is possible. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to step forward. I'm going to step out like Peter because I know the one that's calling me to do these things, but I'm willing to do it. What's going to happen? What's going to happen when we begin to believe? You know what? That budget deficit that we have as a church. You know what? I'm going to believe the impossible is possible. That God's going to raise his funds. He's going to bring in people that are hungry after him and willing to give to him and to the purpose of making disciples. And I'm going to believe the impossible is possible. Right. How will that change our prayers? From just, God, would you bless this food? And the greatest thing that happens in our week is that the food is blessed and we make it safe to grandma's house. To where we start seeing the blind eyes open. We start seeing the lame people walk. And we start seeing our loved ones and our neighbors and our friends and our co-workers come to know Christ as their Savior. And we believe, we value believing the impossible is possible. That God is able to do supernatural abundantly, far beyond anything we could hope, dream, desire, pray. He's able to do it. That's what we're going as we talk, as we continue through this series of our value statements. It starts with this foundation that we believe God. Amen. He can do it. And as a church, we're going to believe God can do the impossible. And as individuals and in your families, I'm going to believe that God can do the impossible. And I'm praying, and we're praying that you join us in this, that you join us. What can God do? You know, we have 20, we have a $235,000 loan on this building. I mean, what would be what would it be like if God could do the impossible and the possible happens? What would it be like if we had this encounter retreat and then everything that holds us back, everything that hinders us, everything that forgives us the heart, everything is released? It's going to be a good year. It's going to be a good year. Amen. We can go forward. 
We can do beyond what we did in 2000 because we put our faith in God. Because we believe He can do it. Are you with me this morning? Amen. 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 We can believe God to do the impossible. And He will make it possible. Let me pray this morning.